104.9 XFM. Uh, you all right? This is Carl, uh, producer of, uh, Ricky Gervais and Steve Merchant. They're not about today. Ricky's on holiday. Uh, Steve couldn't be bothered. So, um, I'm left here with all the dats. Uh, that's a digital audio tape, uh, of all the, uh, of all the shows they've done since they've been here over the last, I don't know, year and a half or something. So, uh, we'll play you uh, some of the best bits. All right, so, uh, here's the first bit. I, I just wish we could maybe tape the bits we're not on air, just because that's when Carl comes into his own. Yeah. He just said to me, I was, I don't know what I was doing, I was sort of like pottering around, dancing around, doing something annoying probably, and he just looked at me, I don't know, he was looking at me, and I looked back and he went, have you ever used a Y front properly? Genius. It's a great question, because the answer is definitely no. Definitely Has no. Has does anyone use their Y front properly? And by that, I mean, get your winky out of the little sort of, um, slot provided, as yeah. opposed to, like, put it to one side or pull them down or yeah. whatever. Has anyone used a Y front properly? I don't think I've ever done it. I don't think I've ever done it. I've never seen anyone in a toilet doing it, Rick. You should be looking. <laughs> I wish I hadn't said that. <laughs> I caught ya. Really? <laughs> yeah. That's <laughs> actually how you prove people are gay. <laughs> yeah. You get them into this conversation. Yeah. Yeah, it's a trap. Uh, yeah, it's a trap. It was, it was, it was, trap. It was, it was, it was the trap. Yeah. I'm not gay, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't prove I was gay, I double bluffed you. Yeah. <laughs> Cause I knew the old gay trick. <laughs> I thought it was the old gay lord say no thing. That is another method. Oh, yeah, there's, a, there's innumerable methods of doing it. That's how Oscar Wilde was caught. Yeah. Yeah. What happened there? Well, the judge went to him. Uh, did you see that film last night? Gay lord say no, and he went no, and they went take him away. Yeah. <laughs> take him down to the cells. Yeah, take him to Reading. It is true. Um, that is well. True. It originated in America. Yeah. So many of these things do. Yeah. It's a brilliant point, Carl. I'd like to hear from anyone. Anyone listening who's- and I mean, uh, well, they'll just lie, wouldn't they, I suppose? Yeah. I don't even use, uh, sort of, flies. No? Usually. I sort of, just, sort of, sort of, pull my boyfriend, uh, my sort of tracksuit. Yeah. That's why I wear, sort of, like, elasticated waist yeah. pants all the time. Exactly. Just sort Speed. of, like- <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. You gotta get in there with the minimum of effort. Yeah. We and out. Sure. Sure. Often, I won't shake. No, well, no. To my detriment, because <laughs> it often leaks out a little bit later, oh. doesn't it? Ever been out on a date with a girl where it's just trickled <laughs> down your leg and you wish it hadn't, and you're thinking, <laughs> what if she gets my trousers off later? She might smell or see it. What? <laughs> like what? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I said there. <laughs> right. Uh, Rick, I had for Christmas something which I think might excite you and interest yeah. you, because I know you're obsessed and interested by facts. Yeah. Don't fiddle with the microphone. Never well, I was just looking that. at what it was underneath it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this is a book, uh, it's just facts and trivia. It's edited by Sir Isaac Asimov, who oh, I think's yeah. dead. So I don't know how, when my parents bought this book. I assume it's from a second-hand shop or something. Right. It's quite long, but I got it for Christmas. I keep meaning to bring it in, because there are, generally the facts are quite sensible in here. And I like to think if Isaac's been involved, they're probably substantiated. It's not like, kind of, just this nonsense on the web. Or, I think or, that this is probably- Or crucial. up in Greg's The Bakers that <laughs> Carl exactly. gets most of his facts from. <clears throat> the ancient Egyptians trained baboons to wait on tables. <laughs> <laughs> Carl, fascinated. Brilliant. That's fantastic. But what, 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 what my point about that is, why did they stop? Yeah. It's genius. a genius idea. Did, Would you not want to go to a restaurant where they had baboons serving? No, I'll tell you what happened. So it might have been like the Planet of the Apes and they sort of rebelled. <laughs> one of them could talk, one of them could take his order, and one day went, went um, uh, do you want fries with that? And the bloke got really annoyed and said, answer him back, and then there was a some sort of rebellion. Right, 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 yeah. right. The Planet of the Apes isn't true, is it? It's not, it's, not, it's, it's not a documentary. Right, okay. I wonder, because what I like the idea of having baboons is the fact that I reckon they're, like, I have tr difficulty, and I'm sure you do, Carl, like, working out that sort of 10%, <laughs> you know, on a bill. Yeah. I reckon baboons would find that particularly hard. I reckon you could get away with under-tipping them all the time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just not leaving enough and just legging it. <laughs> exactly. They go away and you go, sucker. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. I'd love to see yeah. some baboon <laughs> restaurants. If there's yeah. any restaurateurs out there, so Terrence Conrad or someone. If you do go, go to a restaurant and you've been waiting on those, please don't order the banana daiquiri, because it comes half-eaten. They can't help their little selves. They really can't. They're okay with like, you know, beef and steak and chips and all that. But you know, there's a little bit of, I go, do you want to... Can and you imagine that, the baboons serving at waiting tables? It's genius. Just stop to think about that. It's absolutely incredible. Yeah. It's absolutely dynamite. Yeah. That's See, a good zoos fact. would be a lot more popular if there was like the canteen and you could go... If they were serving tickets to two? Uh, yeah, <laughs> exactly. one child. Okay, go through there. 
Okay. I think they should do other things, like in, you know, in the Flintstones, they used to mix cement in that bird's kind of- pen. Pelican, yeah, yeah. Just, we start doing that again. <laughs> Because that's, that also happened in ancient times. <laughs> yeah, exactly. According to the Flintstones. Be yeah, before they had proper cement mixers, that's what <laughs> that they was, did. That was how they it, did it. Definitely, just, yeah. Just, uh, animal facts. I remembered one in the week. Um, Go on. There <laughs> was, do you know them two gay American men who have, have tigers? Okay, the two gay ones, yeah, go on. Two possibly gay guys. Yeah, let, let's not worry about libel law um, anymore, then, or, yeah, If you on. shave a tiger's head- <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa. Right, okay. You gotta treat that sentence with a lot more reverence than you did. <laughs> Think what you're saying. If you shave a tiger's head- Not just its head, its whole body. If- Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> sorry, yeah. Sorry, I thought you- I thought you were getting weird. Go on, then, go yeah, on. if you shave a tiger, yeah, go on. It's still stripy underneath. The yeah. skin, the skin's- Is stripy. it like rock? <laughs> it goes all, it the, like way all the way through. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's amazing. Where did you hear that one? That's- I remembered that, like, I was- Was that a drunk just shouting it in the street? <laughs> 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 I shaved a tiger and it's still stripy. <laughs> Get <laughs> out of here. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know a polar bear? Polar bear's, um, skin is actually, um, black, and its fur is transparent, not white, and it gives the illusion, so it, uh, gets all the radiation possible from the sun, but it's still camouflaged. I didn't understand that, Rick. Sorry, you lost me. If a, its skin's black- A polar bear's skin is black. And its fur is translucent. And its fur is translucent. So why is it white when we see Well, it's it just cause the, the light hits it and- The sun reflects on it. Yeah, and it makes it look white, yeah. So if you look at each individual hair, it's actually translucent. So at night, hair. it would be black? <laughs> well, everything is. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> oh, not bright stuff, Rick. <laughs> <laughs> You've embarrassed yourself. Play a record. XFM 104.9. Lovely, that one. Now, again, I broke the rules in the week. I met up with Carl. Oh, I had lunch with him. And, uh, we were chatting and having a, having a cup of tea. And it got onto one of Carl's favourite programmes was The Tales of the Unexpected. Ah, oh, of course. And all I can think is that he's probably the only person in Britain where they were unexpected. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to him, when that, that twist came in, he'd go, gee, I can't- Yeah. Oh, God. I can't believe So it was the tree that did it. <laughs> and I mean, he was probably the only- and, I, and we were telling all these stories of horror and he liked horror stories. And I, and I told him this story, um, uh, and I don't know if this had come across in the way, but I told him this story, um, it was a- it was a short, it was a horror short. This was a, s a film you saw, was it? Yeah, yeah. And, um, what it was, it started off just had been a car crash, you see this horrendous wreck, and you saw it from the point of view of the person in the car, and he was calling for his mate and he was going, Dave. And he sort of, he sort of looked over and saw a body without a head that had been thrown at He goes, oh no, Dave, Dave. And then into the field of view came Dave, his mate, and looked at him with a look of horror, and then it sort of went black and you realised that he was just a head, and it had been his body. Oh wow. Right? Yeah. And I said, then, then it came up at the end, um, uh, at the, uh, uh, executions and the French Revolution, um, people experienced consciousness for, you know, and he went, he went, oh. No, he said, you wouldn't, it wouldn't be for that long. And then he went, if it was a chicken, it would work. <laughs> Imagine remaking <laughs> that film, but it's two <laughs> chickens <laughs> in horrendous car crash. <laughs> Their would, own fault for driving me. <laughs> <laughs> it would work. No. No, he wasn't having that. Yeah. No, it was too long. I think he said, how long was this film? Went, about oh, no, five minutes. He went, no. <laughs> it would work if it was a chicken. I like the way that Carly and something like when you t relate an incident like that, he's appalled and offended and annoyed by the people that made it, even though he's yeah. never seen oh, it. Oh, he's, he's, he, he's annoyed, yeah. Do you have a favourite uh, Tales of the Unexpected, one that you remember particularly that shook you up? Yeah, we were talking about the one on, um, where, uh, there's some woman in prison. Have you seen that one? No, I can't remember them all. Right? This woman's in prison. Yeah. And, uh, she gets a bit friendly with the guy who takes the dead bodies out. Right. And, uh, he said, I can get you out of here. So what you've got to do, right? You've got to, uh, I don't know, at midnight. When you, well, when you hear the bell toll, yeah, that means there's a, been a, yeah, a uh, dead body. Yeah, yeah, there's been a dead body. So what you've got to do is go into like the uh, place where all the dead bodies are, get on the, get in the first coffin on the right, and then I'll come along and carry you out, and you can run away and escape. Yeah. Right. So she goes, yeah, all right then. So she hears the bell go. I'll, no, I'll, I'll, I'll bury you, right? And then I'll come, I'll come back later and dig you up. Right. Yeah, but that's that, the that point. It doesn't matter. It does matter. Trust me, Carl. All it right, really matters. Okay. Listen, 
I don't uh, know if I'm gonna ruin this for people at home. Yeah. Can I just skip to the f end? I would imagine that she gets buried and he doesn't come back and she has to get no, buried alive. Be better than yeah. that. So she gets in the coffin and uh, she's lying there for ages. She's and she, buried. She can feel a bit of movement going on, so she's obviously, you know, being carried somewhere, so she's thinking this is it and getting out. And uh, I mean, she's lying there for ages and thinking, why isn't someone coming and lifting the lid off this? Do you know what I mean? Letting me get out. So she's really bored. She gets a lighter out, right? Lights it to have a look at who she's lying on. It's only the fella who said she'd it help escape. Oh. How bad is that? That is- <laughs> How bad is that? <laughs> <laughs> so it is quite important that she's buried alive then, isn't it? In retrospect, you realise that the jeopardy is that she's buried alive yeah. and can't get out. Yeah. 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 It makes it so much worse, doesn't it, than just like lying in the morgue and going, actually I'm getting out of here. Yeah. This isn't gonna work. Look at Carl's face, having told yeah. that he's so pleased, his face is lit up, he's beaming like yeah. a child. Is Have that, you seen any? Is that your favourite horror thing ever? What was that one you told me about with the, uh, with the porn. That was a good one. Oh, this was fantastic, right? <laughs> right. There was this, there was this, uh, Sorry, can I just check now? We're just remembering classic episodes of the Tales of No, this is, now, this we? is, this is important. Well, I saw one, <laughs> right? I saw one, um, on Tales and Inspect, right? And it was, um, uh, this, these two gents, um, uh, what they used to do, they look, look down the obituaries and they'd blackmail um, the, the wife or the son of a, a dead eminent person, like might be a priest or a doctor or something like that, and they'd go and they'd say, he bought some, um, erotic, uh, um, stuff from us, um, before he died and he owes, a uh, uh, hundred guineas and all this sort of stuff. And, uh, and they'd pay up because it'd be so embarrassing, they just didn't want them to say, just pay him, yeah. you know? And this one bloke said, um, who are these people? I'll meet with them. And he goes round there, and he goes round, and, uh, they go, your father, he goes, my father could not have bought any erotic material from you. And he did it, he goes, he couldn't have, he's blind. <laughs> right, and that was the twist. And Carl went, so it was magazines, not videos then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now think about it, Steve, is that so stupid? Well, presumably it was set in olden times because yeah. people, I mean, oh, professional right. pornographers don't tend to call it, you know, <laughs> erotic material. Yeah. They tend to call it, you know, juicy jugs or whatever. <laughs> but, <laughs> more than that, I don't understand how a video is gonna be any use to a blind person either. I know that you can hear the sound, yeah. Carl. Look <laughs> yeah. at him nodding like yeah. he's caught me out. Yeah, what sound will you hear? Do, 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 Ooh, do, do, ah. do, do, do. Your meter mm. needs looking at? Yes. Cut. What's then? What's that? Then it's just noises, isn't Occasional it? groans. Yeah. Right. You okay. could listen through the wall at your neighbours. <laughs> he does. <laughs> I mean, that's why I save a lot of money. <laughs> but I thought you were going to point out, Carl, that they could have had a Braille porno. Now, have yeah. you thought of that? Look, feel, feel the lumps on that. <laughs> exactly. Think about it, Carl. Think about it. You're excited now. Yeah. yeah. Your girlfriend's away, Carl. Yeah, the cheese grate is only under the cupboard. <laughs> <laughs> now, she's a good looking lady. Yeah. <laughs> Have you ever been hated? Or make you cry, but tonight I'm cleaning up my closet. I'm cleaning up my closet. One hundred four point nine XFM. Hello, uh, I'm Carl, Ricky, and uh, Ricky Gervais and Steve aren't here, so we're uh, we're playing through some of the best bits. I say the best bits. Uh, it's the bits I came across first. I mean, I'm not I'm not wasting my time. I'm I'm a busy man. You know what I mean? So um, here's here's another bit. What do you make of the first genetically modified baby? Oh. Are you worried about do you, this? Do you know what, what did they do? What? Let me see what it says here. It well, says, isn't it uh, just choosing, uh, choosing the, you know, eye colour Well, this or, is the, or this is the, this is the concern, isn't it? That in the future you'll be able to decide, uh, whether it's a boy or a girl, what, how intelligent it is, what it looks like, is it handsome, is it ugly? Obviously no one will choose an ugly baby, and so on and so on and so on. And so, it means that, you know, wh where will it lead? Where will it end, Carl? Are you concerned? I've thought about this a lot. What will us three look like in the future if listen. they're being, you know, genetically modified beautiful people? What will be we be like? How will we be considered in That's society? True, yeah. But we've talked about this before, haven't we? About uh, the cloning thing. Yeah, that's no, a bit weird. Yeah. But um, I don't think it matters because at the end of the day, right? You might look like some other kid, but it's the way you've brought that you brought up that will change your features and the way you are. You know, your personality. If you lie, you get a long nose, don't you? Well, no. But listen, right? Because I remember. When, when we, you know, I was growing up on this estate. This is gonna be good. Go on. No, no it's not. It's just a, an example of how this doesn't work. Go so, on. So we don't need to worry sort of thing. Sure. Right? Okay. So, growing up on this estate and there was a, there was this woman about four houses down, right, who's a bit rough. <laughs> Alright. Didn't fancy her. Oh, God, no. 
right? But <laughs> she had a Why? baby. But tell me about her first. I'm interested in this woman. Why was she? It was a very. Was it like being a man in a dress. I mean, I didn't grow up in a posh house or anything. And I'm sure. Not, I'm not saying that if you live in a bit of a rough house, mm. you're a bad person. What but, did she look like? But anyone can Tattoos? clean up. Look like make, Tony Green with a fag on. They didn't clean up much, right? Oh. Which even if you've not got a lot of money, you can still try what, and make a place look nice. Yeah. Right. But she didn't, and a kid used to take a horse into the house. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> whoa, 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 oh, whoa, yeah. whoa, 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 Neddy, whoa, 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 Neddy. What do you mean a kid used to take a horse into the house? Where'd they get a right? horse? Must have nicked it from somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Must have gone. you seen a horse in it? No. <laughs> what, is that from outside the saloon round the corner? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, was it just tied up with a bit of leather? <laughs> Right? And, um, oh, that's great. I'd Did Big out. Jake come <laughs> looking so, for it? I, I, I'd been out. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, so let me get this. This was before the lynching stopped or after. <laughs> 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 Where'd he get a horse from? What do you mean he must have nicked it? His mum said, Where'd you get that from? I bought it. All right then. But we'll keep it out of the kitchen. <laughs> I don't want you going Catlin rustling. <laughs> <laughs> Where did he get a horse from, Carl? Just... And how long did he have it for? Until... Was he leading it or riding it? <laughs> Mum, open the door, I can't stop! I can't stop it! <laughs> open the patio door as well, I'll be- Looks like we got us a runaway! <laughs> what do you mean? I don't know, but the oh. thing is, they couldn't afford to buy one because they're not cheap. So I'm just guessing. Maybe that's wrong of me. But I, I think- He had to... a horse? Yeah, right, so- That's I... why the family didn't have any money, they'd spend it on the horse. No, exactly. I don't think, that's what I'm saying, I don't think they would have bought it. So anyway- Yeah, it's so... always to whisper, Carl, in case they're listening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it's They could not, be in the room next door. It's not buying it, it's keeping it as well. Oh, but, so what? I, so I was like in the car with my dad, coming yeah. into the avenue, and you used to have to drive down it to turn round. And, yeah. Uh, and you know, sort of go back to, to our house. You had the traditional method of transport, <laughs> yeah. And, uh, the horse was in the lounge. <laughs> Reading a paper. Just, just like walking around. <laughs> oh God! This what? And when I, when I was doing, I, I tried to earn myself some money once by flogging little flowers in, in plastic cups. What? This right. is genius. <laughs> it just keeps coming. What do you mean you tried to flog little flowers? What do you mean? <laughs> Wait, 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 wait. Let's, let's play a record, let's play a record and come back to this, because it's always gonna minute. just unravel and unravel. It's <laughs> yeah, gonna go yeah. for hours. Let's it play a track, deeper and deeper, it's yeah, like an onion, onion isn't You've, it? We've <laughs> created a whole world here where there's a man living with a horse. Just walking around the lounge. I mean, I, I just, come from the West Country, I've never just, heard anything like that. I just think of a big sort of, like, orange carpet and a, 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 a rediffusion telly and this horse yeah. going, I'm fed up in here. Exactly. This is really... I am not taking the rubbish out again. Yeah. <laughs> right, play a record. Let's have uh, Velvet Underground. We've got that lined up. Oh, yeah, God. the classic from the first album. Uh, I'm waiting flowers. for the man. Let's come back to the horse in a second. Little flowers in pots. <laughs> what do you mean? Oh. From that classic first album, Velvet Underground and Nico, which apparently peaked at a disappointing 171 in the US charts. Think of that. And that's obviously Lou Reed, the Velvet Underground, and uh, Waiting for the Man. Yeah, great track. So. We were talking, uh, we were doing White Van Man, and, uh, we got onto, uh, um, We got onto genetically, like, genetically modified babies, but somehow- And then somehow Carl started telling a story about someone with a horse, and then he got onto, he was trying to make money selling flowers. Just do the flowers briefly. Well, hang on, I just want to recap slightly. So there was a family, and who had the horse in the family? It was- Cause you lived on a, an estate in Manchester. The, so the, the yeah. mother, the mother was a right pig, apparently. Well, I don't know if that's well, relevant. You don't need to go that far. But, but you- But, but what I'm trying to do is, like, make a picture for you so you understand- What does she what look picture like? Who did she look like? Um, bit of a, I no disrespect to her, bit like Pauline Quirk. <laughs> Quirky, yeah. <laughs> right? Okay. I knew you were gonna say that. Yeah. I knew it was gonna be Pauline. Did she have any tats? Did she have any tats? I've never got that close to her. Okay, alright. So, and so who had the horse? Was this her son or her no, husband? No, her, her daughter. Her daughter had stolen a horse? Yeah, from, I don't know where, there was a, I think it was some stables down the road or something. And they, they kept the horse in the house with them. They kept it in the house. Did but they, they didn't get have caught? it for long. No. So and you said you were in the house one day and you saw the no, horse. No, in what there. happened was I was um they did this thing at school about raising money for charity, right? For some local charity. And they said you can do anything to, to raise money and they came out with all these ideas and I thought, that's good. What was the charity? But forget well, I dunno, I thought forget the charity. Yeah, that's I'm just a, a good money making idea. Idea. So, <laughs> You're a charity. So, um, <laughs> so I asked me ma'am for some, uh, cause she used to have a lot of flowers around the house. Sure. I said, can I just take some snippings off them? And, uh, I'll go and buy some plastic cups. And, uh, got some soil out of the garden, planted the, the, the bits of plants in them. Yeah. Got a tray. Yeah. Had about 25 plants on it, selling yeah. them for 25 pence each. Excellent. Did you sell any? Yeah, so loads. So they, did you just cut, you didn't just cut them and stick them in yeah, the soil? Yeah, they want to survive. 
Oh. But I think people sort of thought, well, good on him for trying. But anyway, so I went round to theirs, because I thought their house could do with a bit of colour and stuff. Yeah. Because it's a bit rough. So, as I went- The horse went, thank God for that <laughs> breakfast. <laughs> so they've, they've, they've been feeding me kitty cat. <laughs> so yeah. I got up to the door, and they opened the door, and it was one of them houses where no carpet. <laughs> yeah. A horse in the living room. <laughs> you know. We've all been there. And, yeah. and the horse was walking around the living room. Oh. I looked quite happy and everything, because I always say that about animals. That beauty right? was on. <laughs> yeah. Well, think about it, right? If you were a horse, where would you rather be? In a little wooden hut with a load of hay, or in like a house with a central you know, heating, three-piece suite, and sure. a telly and that? <laughs> <laughs> telly and that? Because, no, but I was saying this the other day. Right? <laughs> and an Atari, right? <laughs> I was walking through London. Coming on sixty-four, yeah. rubbish. Exactly. W walking through London with Suzanne, right? Yeah. And do you know, like homeless people, always have dogs. And yeah. she said, oh, I hope, I hope she looks after it. And I said, they've got- that dog is happier than most dogs. Right. Because people always walk past and give it a pat on the head. Yeah. It's with its owner all the time. Yeah. yeah. It's out in the open, it's not locked up in a house. Yeah. It doesn't you know eat, I mean? but other than that- <laughs> No, it does eat though, they're always alright. So that's what I was saying, I think this horse was- was doing alright for yeah. itself. Do you know <laughs> I mean? Well, not many horses have got their own house. Exactly. For a start, yeah. But anyway, that's- that's- what, That's what by the by. Yeah, yeah, so anyway, this family- Who's a bit? What were we talking about? It was about cloning. genetically modified kids yeah. and all that yeah. stuff. Yeah. Right now, what I'm saying is, you could say, you know, right, Steve, you could have a baby, right, mm -hmm. and Ricky could see it and say, God, I want one that looks like that. Yeah. <laughs> right. It so, could happen, Rick. <laughs> so come on, work with him. So you take it to the doctors, and I don't know what they do. They, they inject it with something or whatever. Yep, that's how yeah. it's done. Yeah. And uh, get a little baby, and there it is. It looks the same. Now the thing is, you separate. You both go off and do your own things. Yep. Yeah. Right. Now, you look at Ste Stephen. This is you look after your baby. Yeah. You treat it well. You give it good food and I'm that. a good dad. All the vitamins and stuff. Yeah. Mm. Ricky just gives it cheese. <laughs> right. So then it changes its looks. It goes a bit fat. You know, it gets tired easily, and that sort of thing. <laughs> now, when this family- Why am I just feeding a baby cheese? Right? This, this, um, this, this, this family who had a horse in the, in, you know, in, the, in their house. Yeah. They had a, a little baby. And my mum went round and said, you're not gonna believe this, but it's a beautiful looking baby. Right? Yeah. And I was like, well, you know. And, uh, the weird thing is, it was a good looking kid, but as time went on, they didn't really look after it. And I'm not saying, like, abusing it, but it used to run around, it used to play out till, like, ten at night. Yeah. Uh, it used to chase cars. <laughs> right. It was a bit- <laughs> Did it have hooves? <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. No. <laughs> it used to chase cars! Right. What sort of kid chases cars? <laughs> oh, God. No. Was it called Rover? The weird Did it catch th sticks? It's Liam, it was called, right? Right. Now, the weird thing is, it was a good looking kid, but as time went on, and all that like, not eating properly and its hair was all patchy. It's not Liam Gallagher, is it? <laughs> <laughs> and chasing cars on that, and it became an ugly kid. It's definitely Liam Gallagher. <laughs> and that's, uh, that's what I'm saying, right? You can, uh, clo you can clone all you like, but at the end of the day, it's yeah. how you're brought up. Brilliant. Wow. Wow. Life. Wow. That was a hell of a point. Oh, God. God. But am I right? Oh, you're always right, Carl. Alright, this is Carl, the, uh, producer of Ricky Gervais and Stephen Merchant on XFM 104.9. We're playing out some of the best bits, hope you're enjoying it. Here's another one. And now it's Carl's bit, it's Carl's, it's the re-education of Carl, he's like Liza Doolittle. And now he's, uh... He's coming to- or Lawnmower Man, if you've seen that film. More like Lawnmower Man, if you've seen the film, you'll know what I mean. Um, uh, and, uh, his homework was to just study quotes, really, on- on happiness and stuff, and general well-being. He's not a big happiness, uh, quote fan, are you, Carl? Not really. So what have you done? You've- you've come up with something, haven't you? Right, yeah, I told you, right? Because a lot of these are just things you say every day, they're nothing special. Um, so what I'm doing- Well, you say them every day. <laughs> well, the sort of things you come out with and you don't even think about it, do you know what I mean? Yeah. They're, yeah. In, they're on the TV all the time, people on the radio are saying these sort of little quotes. Sure. And, um, what I've done is, remember that programme on Channel 4, Faking It? Yeah. Where they got some, like, posh kid to be on a door and all that. What I've done, <laughs> I've, um- <laughs> Imagine if that was the pitch <laughs> for the show. Dear Channel 4. <laughs> Just gonna get yeah, a posh kid on a door or something? Yeah, yeah, Yours come in, really come calm. in. Yeah. TV yeah. producer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, go on. So, what I've done, <laughs> this little book of quotes, uh, happiness quotes, I've, um, I've picked two that are real. Okay. And I've made one up. 
right? <laughs> and we've got a guess. And you've got a guess. Okay, then. Go on. Well, I'll tell you what, Rick, why don't we, when we've heard them, we won't confer. No. You'll write down yours, yeah. A, B, or C, and I'll yeah. write down mine, and we'll sure. see how okay, it works. Okay, Carl, off you go. Right, and just because I'm, I'm looking at this book, it doesn't mean I'm actually reading. No, I know, Don't no, worry, we're, we're clever. No, no, no we know, we know, we can't see, yeah, yeah. like, call my bluff? Yeah, okay. go on then. Nothing is worth more than this day. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. The way I see it... <laughs> 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 Oh, oh God, my head's gonna burst. No, hang on. My head's gonna burst. No, hang, hang no, on. this might not be Carl's. Oh, it might not be. How do you know I haven't tweaked them a little bit? Yeah, good okay, point. Good enough. point, no, good point. The way I see it, if you want the rainbow, you gotta put with the rain. Yeah, okay. okay. Alright. Alright, yeah. Okay, hang on. Yeah. Come on. Cat food. <laughs> Cat food, go on. It stinks a bit. But if you don't put up with the smell, the little kitten will die. <laughs> Steve! Steve! I don't know what to say! <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to say. Imagine this in faking it. Imagine their faces when he says that. And they're going, oh my god. Oh. Carl, play a song, mate. <laughs> oh, we'll have to confer on this one. <laughs> <laughs> Go on then. Right. Uh, first one. Nothing is worth more than this day. Excellent. Next one. What does that mean? Well, cherish, cherish yep. now, cherish your yep. time. Okay. Because you, you, uh, you can't get it back and, yep. you know, I swear um, I saw it. carpe diem, whatever it is, seize the day and all that. Okay. If you want the rainbow, you've got to put up with the rain. Yeah, of course. Yeah, rough with the smooth. You know, it's not all plain sailing, but, you know, rainbow's beautiful, but it comes because of the rain, which you might not like, so yep. make the most of everything and, yeah, yep. good. <laughs> Cat food doesn't smell good, <laughs> but... If you don't put up with it, then the little kitten will die. <laughs> right, now, Carl, that is a good effort. Now, that one's yours. I mean, obviously, right? Right. Right, no, no, but it's a good effort, right? I mean, it slipped seamlessly into the others. Yeah. I don't think it didn't. <laughs> no, but it's, it's good. I mean, we knew it, we knew it was that one, but, um, what I will say is, it's good, but what you don't know, maybe subconsciously, is, I mean, it, it, it's n very similar to, uh, the putting up with the rain and the rainbow, but what, that's good. Why do you think that? Well, what what does mine mean? Well, uh, ev well, even though it smells bad, it's good for something. Right. So see, I, I didn't look at it like that. What, what did you look at? That? Uh, I I kind of thought. Was yours more specifically about cat food <laughs> generally? Because <laughs> right. you know, normally they like it's an analogy, yeah, or a metaphor for something. You know, much well, bigger. well, no, the way I, I mean, Do it. Dolly Parton, who I think did the rainbow rain thing, she wasn't specifically concerned about weather conditions. No. It was a sort of general idea. Yeah, it was all about yeah, life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's, that's what I've done. Go on. Okay. Well, I've well, used well, an everyday thing. Yeah. And put it with today's problems, right? Go on. So, like, um, <laughs> my girlfriend, yeah, um, she might like to go shopping for clothes. I hate it. Right. But because of, because I love her, I put up with it. Ah, oh, that's nice. Yeah? Yeah. So, you, you love that little curtain. You can't stand the smell of the stuff, you gotta feed it. But because you love it, you go, well, you know, I'll put up with this just for a few minutes and then I can, like, squeeze its head later and give it a little- <laughs> <laughs> Sorry! <laughs> squeeze its little head. No, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, that's just the thing that I do with cats. Put it in a bag and drown it in a lake. <laughs> <laughs> I can feed it and then I can throw it against <laughs> yeah, the wall. Exactly. So you, yeah. didn't, you didn't see it like that, did you? No, that's very good. So it's about love, is it? It's about putting up with the bad things yep. for, for, for something you love. Yeah. Well, that's nice. But, but, but Carl, good. you seem now to be convinced and rather smug that you've tricked us and that you've fooled us and that we didn't understand it. Well, no, well I say that's your fault, not ours. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not, though. I mean, look, that man in Forrest Gump, he was a bit of a nutter. <laughs> And he, he came up with the life is a box of chocolates thing. Yeah. Now, if that was in this book, you say, oh yeah, brilliant, you know, a good bit of work. But if he was sat here doing the show with you, yeah. you'd be taking the mickey out of him. Sometimes I feel he is. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, Carl, I could, I could, in fact, if people are out there, we're too lazy, could you write down everything Carl's ever said? Because I think we could publish that. Yeah. He said one today, he saw my, um, uh, salamander, it's not a euphemism, <laughs> he saw my salamander and it's just sitting there in the tank. Your exotic pet. Yeah, and he's worried about there's not being a lid on, and he said, I went, what were we worried about? He said, he said, well, he said it sits there for 24 hours a day, 
obviously planning to get out. <laughs> well, he's got nothing else on its mind, and it's- <laughs> the, the daft thing is, he has actually got the- like, the lid ripped up a little bit. <laughs> And I'll be looking up there. Yeah. It's going to get out. But what's the worst that could happen? What's Carl? it thinking? What do you think it's thinking, this salamander? It's got its eye on the DVD player. <laughs> 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 I can have Ian be down the market. <laughs> Class. Class. <laughs> Rock the I love the fact you had at least three minutes to get that right. To I know. prepare and get that right. I know, but my mouth was full of uh, Maryland cookies. Mm. Yeah. You know, last week, mm. th this would- oh, this would blow your mind. He came in, do you know what he'd bought for himself, at uh, about ten, penguins. Mm. Who buys penguins still? I know. Or wagon wheels. Oh, I've never liked wagon wheels. <laughs> you not been a fan? No, no, but I'm oh, sorry about that. It's The Clash and Rock the Casbah. Mm -hmm. Um, talking about records, have I told you that time my brother-in-law, um, uh, he was moving out of his place, and I think moving in with my sister. And I was about like, um, I don't know, 13. Um, and so he was about, I don't know, 30. And I moved in, and uh, he brought round all, um, uh, his records when he was storage to, to leave him at our house. Mm -hmm. Right, and he had all these old sort of records, 50s and 60s records, no, I was right. And, uh, um, and, uh, they, uh, put him upstairs. And I was looking through them, and, uh, it's just all like Alvis stuff and Beatles stuff. And there was a mate of mine who loved Alvis, okay? Mm -hmm. And he had, um, oh, well, loads of chemicals, <laughs> yeah. He had loads of chemicals and I was into chemistry. And, uh, he said, I swapped me some chemicals for them. So I sort of nicked about five Alvis singles, and I got all these chemicals. And, uh, and then the guilt just hit me. I just thought, well, he's gonna notice that. And I just, I, one night, I just came downstairs, and I confessed to my mum. And she went, all right, well, I won't tell him, but you've gotta be good. And it's sort of like, I was just really, really good for a year. <laughs> and then I remember, um, when I was about 18, uh, my brother was talking about it, and he said, did you ever, um, uh, play those records I left for you? <laughs> <sighs> Brilliant. He told my mum, he said, these are for Ricky. She just didn't tell she me. She was sharp, wasn't she? Oh. She, she used opportunism there. Oh, that's genius. And, uh, that was it. That's, that's but, why I was good. But you've <laughs> never, you've never stolen anything since, have you? No, I don't, I don't, I don't Except know. that spate of, uh, of shoplifting after that to teach your mum a lesson. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I went round, uh, and, uh, arson. Mm. Uh, no, no, I did, I, I, I just couldn't believe it. I, I just, oh, that's it was great terrible. I, I remember, um, and I think all kids go through a phase of shoplifting. Well. Um, and, I, I, when I was going through it, mm. um, I used to just, just little things, just like magic markers and, uh, magazines, Mars bars, that sort of thing. Yeah. And one day, right, uh, that me, me mate, Anthony, his mum called up my mum and said, I've got to, uh, I've got to meet up with you, I've got to have a word with you. And, uh, she said, what about? She said, I don't want to talk about it over the phone. So she goes, oh, right, well, yeah, come round tonight then. So anyway, my mum sees me, she, she don't want to be in an awkward position and, like, be a bit embarrassed and what have you. So she sees me and she goes, right, Anthony's mum's coming round, what have you been doing? Yeah. So I go, oh, God, I said, I've, I've been nicking stuff. So she goes, like, what? So oh, not, not big stuff, I've, I've had a few calculators and uh, Mars bars and stuff. How many? I'll just work it out. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> Works out at 7.2 per day. So, um... <laughs> How so, many calculators do you need? So, anyway, <laughs> so it was when that phase... You every, failed maths, didn't you? <laughs> everyone wanted a calculator. It was like a trendy thing, wasn't it? Right, oh, yeah. yeah. In Manchester a couple of years ago, yeah. So, um... <laughs> so, anyway, so I told her all this and I confessed to, like... Computers will make it there, won't they? <laughs> confessed to... It is magic in the back. <laughs> yeah. Of battery. <laughs> Go on. Confessed to nicking all this stuff. She comes round, she only wanted to borrow some money. Brilliant. She said, Brilliant. Oh, I, I don't like asking. I was a bit embarrassed to ask you over the phone, but can I borrow 20 quid? Oh, that's fantastic. And there's me. <laughs> that's great. And it's the oh. sort of thing to yours. And did you- And um, he went, hold on, I'm going to work out the interest on that. <laughs> yeah. uh, I'm back at 10%. She'll owe you four yeah. pounds 40. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and did you, so, so, your mum was a loan shark. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, um, and, uh, I, did, 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 uh, did she mention she that went, you I just, I just with your, with that other- Because what I'm saying is, presumably you've got no, your no, mate no, in trouble. No, 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 right, no. That's great. Anyway, should we have some more music? Yeah, yeah, we've been on. waiting for what, what are you going to play, Carl? We've got the Cooper Temple Claws. Oh, brilliant. Please. Cooper Temple Claws. Who needs enemies? Good question, lads. Nobody. <laughs> Six <laughs> FM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais. Oh, they me. should print a little book of those. <laughs> <laughs> They're great. <laughs> oh, how you can relate any song or artist <laughs> to anything else.
<laughs> easy. Joyful. Easy. Well, yeah, so, uh, me and, uh, me and Carl went out, uh, for a beer, and it was, uh, it was great, wasn't it? Yeah, enjoyed we start, myself. We started yeah, off, good. and you met my mate Robin, didn't you? Yeah. And, uh, um, some of the stories. Do you want to tell Steve some things about Robin? That Robin. You learned? Do you know him well? Yes. Well, um, do you know about his, his worm problem as a kid? Go on. Right. He, uh, what I can remember is he, he had worms as a kid. Not sure how you get them, he never answered me, he was getting a bit touchy about it. Right. I, I, this is like the second time I met him, and I think he was a bit annoyed that Ricky told me about his problem. What, yes. now, what, uh, now straight away, you not being there, instinctively, what do you think went on with this story about worms? My suspicion yeah. is rather like when you told a group of people that Robin had once suckled milk from a cow's udder. <laughs> yeah, he told, he told I, that. Yeah, did he mention that as well? Yeah. Yeah. Th uh, my suspicion is that, uh, like the cow story, the worm story is not true. But and why, Robin why would he get so sort of uppity about it? Well, imagine because it's if, not true. Imagine if he, that wasn't the first time he'd done it. Imagine if he did that every single time <laughs> he was with somebody for the first time and Robin was, uh, just met them. He tells that, he will tell that story to anyone. But they do say there's no smoke without fire. <laughs> Robin. I also, I, I also told him that the way Robin cured these worms yep. was because the doctor told his mother, right, to hold a piece of ham or cheese near Robin's anus so the worms would come out for the food, and he believed it. I I'll said tell to, you why, though. I said to Robin used to sit on spam to try and get the worms out, and he believed it. But Steve, right, do you remember that story about th three or four years ago where there was some bloke in the army? He went away to somewhere, Vietnam or whatever. He was messing about in the woods. Um... <laughs> messing about in the woods? Shouldn't he have been fighting? <laughs> whatever. Yeah. Right, and he, he walked through some lake, and I think he'd cut his toe or something <laughs> on, on something, and some worm of some sort crawled in the, in the gash. Yeah. And, um, it, it was in his body, and the doctor said, we've got to get this out of your body. So, what they did was, they said, right, the, the thinnest part of something, of your body that things can crawl through, is on the top of your head. So they wrap some Where the skull is. So they wrap some bacon. <laughs> <laughs> no, they didn't. They did. Because ah, that's all right. Thing. So Everyone... he's gone by the toe. Uh, so what we do is, I'll tell you what, that worm's probably heading straight for the head. We put a bit of bacon on it. The thinnest part of the body is the the, the skull. Of course, it's not the thinnest part of the body. It's uh, where your brain case is, isn't it? It's the hard. The skull. There was there was a reason for it. And it was like they, they, um, stuck some bacon on his head. And <laughs> As ever, the vital piece of information, uh, <laughs> i.e. the reason, Carl seems to have forgotten. It, because the worm was in, in his body and they said every, you know, everyone likes the smell of bacon. Including even worms. A worm. Even a, even a Vietnamese lake worm. They, <laughs> they, 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 they... Oh, they love bacon. Last week, remember last week when I said about the little fella with the bone with no brain and you were proved wrong? No. Please. No, 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 We were saying it wasn't a little fella. We were saying it was a stillborn child. It wasn't no, a little you're fella. You're changing it now. You weren't having any of it last right, week. Right, hang on a minute. Let's just, I'm getting confused. There was a Vietnamese... There wasn't a Vietnamese, there was a Vietnamese snake that went inside of no, a soldier. Worm. A little white maggot or some sort <laughs> that you have to get out of your body because it causes problems. Yes, and so in order <laughs> to get it out of the <laughs> body, they strapped bacon to his head. Yeah. <laughs> that is great. This doctor. And did that work? I think so. They had a picture of him smiling. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, what, the worm or the bloke? The bloke. Oh, <laughs> dear. Honest, honestly, I, I hope someone knows a story and I right. just, it was about three years ago, I reckon. Okay. And, um, yeah, it did work. G.I. So, G. I. Bacon. So this is why <laughs> I, I, when, and when- And so what, the, wor the worm burrowed out of his head to get the bacon? Get to the bacon. Right. Um. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. So I this is, that. this is why when Robin was telling his story, I, I was a little bit disappointed if it wasn't true. Right. Because in a way- You know Robin's never been to Vietnam. <laughs> <laughs> no, but what, I, I would do you really think that Robin, well, as Robin said at the time, Carl, why would I sit on ham, then tell Ricky Gervais? <laughs> it's <laughs> a very good point. Because if he was a kid, you, d you do daft things like that as a kid. <laughs> right. He is the telling Ricky Gervais, though. Yeah. And yeah. then, oh, bless him. Okay. And, and then anyway, then, uh, Robin left and, uh, I tried to chase him but he got away <laughs> and he knows that we, uh, yeah. Um, and then we had a few pints and then, uh, Carl embarked on some of the greatest stories ever told. Have you, can you tell the story about your dad? Let me run it, I haven't spoke to him all week so let me run it by him. Okay, play records. Cause, uh, you know. What we got? We've got, uh, 
one of Steve's tunes. Yeah, well, bizarrely enough, this comes from the, uh, Teachers 2 soundtrack, oh. the soundtrack to the, uh, the current TV series. There's a slight whiff of nepotism in the air. Yeah. Rick, would you like to explain why? Well, that's why you're doing it. Though my girlfriend, uh, worked on it. But, yeah. um, you were gonna play this anyway, weren't you? Well, I was, actually. Bizarrely enough, I was gonna play some I Am Clute, and, uh, this is from, as I say, the, uh, the Teachers soundtrack. This is called To You. It's a good track. That's I Am Clute, and a track called To You from the, uh, Teachers soundtrack. That's also got, uh, I know it's the Electric Soft Parade, The Hives, Star Sailor, Feeder, uh, Turin Breaks, Mercury Rev on there. It's a good little collection. Lovely. Carl, uh, has just had confirmation. He's looking smug, cos someone phoned up and went, it is true, it's a Lao Gai Chi worm, and you wrap bacon around your head. That's all the bloke knew as well. Yeah. And his name was Gary. Yeah. So I'm not having it. No. And he said, he said, see, that's why the Robin thing isn't so weird. He said, but when you said he tried it with cheese, he said I was having none of it. <laughs> He's got standards. <laughs> Strokes, hard to explain. Like Carl, really? Yes, yes. So, Carl, concentrate. Yeah, go on. So, we'll, um, we'll, we'll leave the worm with the bacon wrapped round the head, shall we? Well, if you're ever caught in the jungle... Yeah, always carry some... Bit of Danish. <laughs> Good advice. <laughs> Lovely. So, would you like to start on your, uh, to Steve, because I've heard all these, um, uh... Well, we won't do them all. Well, um, we'll, st we'll start off with the, uh, the Mr. Freeze. Tell Steve the story of Mr. Freeze. This is the first time he nearly died. This, this is the most serious of the lot, really. So, um, what it was, do you know, like, um, I don't know if your mum and dad did the same thing, but, like, they do the weekly shopping on, on, like, a Friday. Yeah. So when when you got to Thursday, <coughs> there won't be much stuff left in the cupboard. It'd just be like you know your Jacob's crackers and stuff mm. like that. So when they when they'd been to the supermarket and they came back, I was like, uh, you know, what's that saying? Like a pig in, you know, I, I loved it. It was like loads of food coming in, loads of biscuits. He nearly of, said, what is that saying? He nearly said pig in shit. <laughs> right. Is that the saying? <laughs> yeah. Right. So um, so yeah, all this food comes in. Thank God like, he didn't. <laughs> 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 Otherwise he'd have been in trouble. That's true enough. Because he's, he's culpable for our actions, because he's exactly. the producer. <laughs> so technically, oh. that twat's in charge, go yep. on. Right, so anyway, so there's loads of food, and I'm like, oh yeah, look at this, and chocolate biscuits, and uh, you know, penguins and stuff. Bacon. So, and bacon. <laughs> Just in case, you never know. So, um, so, anyway, my mum and dad's putting the food away, me and our kid are like, he's already grabbed something, gone back upstairs. It's like feral children. <laughs> it's, it's like a quest for fire. <gasps> and then they run upstairs. <laughs> it, what did they just sit under the bed, gnawing at some sort of pig's trotter? So, so I saw, um, do you remember Mr. Freeze Pops? I do, yeah. So, right. well, they're kind of like popsicles, icicles. Yeah, they? but really long, like yeah, a foot yeah, long, yeah. right? Yeah. So I thought, I'll have one of them, so I grabbed it. Went for the nutritious stuff first. Absolutely. And, uh, and like my mum and dad are putting the stuff away and what have you. And I, I rip it open and knock it back. Right, straight away, just right back like Swallow that. Swallow it right straight away, yeah. But it, it went down the wrong way, right? <laughs> what, so I what, was down like, your oh. shirt? <laughs> <laughs> so I, I was like, oh God, I can't breathe. And my mum and dad didn't, uh, didn't even know what I'd ate. Do you know what I mean? It went, it, I ate it so, f f so quick. Yeah. And, uh, I'm sort of tapping my mum on the back going, uh, uh, and she's going, oh God, you know, he's, he's choking again, because I was always choking. <laughs> if it was one thing, I don't know if I've got like a small throat, <laughs> but, but I mean, even Ricky knows, I can't drink that much, can I? Yeah. Do you know, or I'm eat pebbles. A, I'm, <laughs> I'm not a, f a quick drink drinker, I'd always, um, I think I'm scared of like, swallowing stuff. Yeah. And, uh, it was like bottle tops and mint imperials and stuff, <laughs> I was always, God. I was always choking on stuff. Bottle <laughs> so, so anyway, she's going, oh God, what's he picked up on it now? Drop it! Drop it! So, and hit, his, hit his nose with a stick! <laughs> so I was going, oh, I'm choking. At this point, my dad had like, I think he'd put his, his share away, you know, his food away, and he'd gone his to- His share! I yeah. love it! Yeah. He'd, he'd gone to watch like, winner takes all or whatever, <laughs> in a lounge, and I, I was in the kitchen, and I was starting to like, just, I didn't care anymore, do you know what I mean? I hadn't, I, I just got to that point where I wasn't struggling anymore. You just thought I'm done for? I just for. was like, falling to the ground. And my mum's going, you know, get in here, I think it's serious. And my dad comes in and sort of starts shouting at me, saying that's what you get for being greedy. He didn't even know what I'd eaten. Well, it was, it was the moment to teach you a lesson, certainly. So, he's there like that, and my mum's going, oh, look at him, and my lips were going purple, and my eyes were rolling into the back of my head. Yeah, like Marilyn Manson. And, uh, so anyway, she grabbed me from behind and did that, that fireman thing. The Heimlich manoeuvre. Yeah. And, uh, you know, winded me and it came up and I was alright. What, the whole like, popsicle came flying back out? I don't, I don't, I, you see, that's what I don't understand. Cos, 
No, there was nothing it, there. No, I mean, just a little bit. No, it swells up, doesn't it? Because it irritated it. So it went down your, your sort of like your epiglottis. It went down the wrong way. Like it went into your air canal instead of your so throat. And it, it sort of it it sort of spasms, and that's the that's the fear. You just got to calm it down and relax. So that in time, I would have been alright. Yeah, anyway. you don't. Um, well, no, yeah. you might have. So that's so so so, so, so that's hang on. One. So, but, but, so no, no, no. But the weird thing is, like for like three days after that, I felt like a sort of a special person. <laughs> I was I went to school. Oh, what's I did, that? I'm nothing. I, I did full days. <laughs> <laughs> a special needs person. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I went. I went to school the next three days after that. I didn't like wag it or anything. I did full days. I love that. Three days turn everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. After yeah. three days, you thought screw it. Yeah. Well, did, did the quick history yeah. exam. <laughs> mm. Right. Next that one. That's popsicle. That's popsicle hell. We call that. Right. Next one. Uh, which one's the next one? Oh, what about your paper round? Right. The paper round one, uh, paper round, I'd still say it's the best job I've ever had. <laughs> <laughs> and he means it! No, I really oh. enjoyed it. It's like, you oh. know, you, you, <laughs> you don't have to work with anyone else, right? Uh. So you make your own rules. <laughs> Just think of that. Um, yep. you know, um, you sort of You're around. spreading information well, yeah, to people. Yeah, vital information. giving a service. Yeah. And no one else is around, you know, you can just do what you want and think about stuff whilst you're cycling around on your bike. It's really good. Yeah. So, um, so anyway. Imagine the stuff he's thinking about <laughs> when he's driving around <laughs> I, know, I can't. <laughs> oh. So. <laughs> getting in the head of a salamander. <laughs> so I anyway, I, I loved it. And even though I only got like 50p a day, right, no matter what the weather was like and stuff, I used to get up at half past four and, uh, go and do the round. And, um. Why did you get up at half past four? Because I wanted to watch the Pink Panther at five thirty, so I wanted to get me paper round done. I said, "Why didn't you watch the Pink Panther?" And then, and then, the then he, went, he went, "Oh, I can't sit there thinking I've got my paper round to do." <laughs> He'll ruin it for him. Yeah. So is it a good job or not? Go so on. four four thirty, I was up, up and about, and this morning it was like winter, really bad winter, bad snow, you know, freezing cold, really windy, and all that. And my mum said to me before I went to bed, she said, "Don't be getting up tomorrow. I'll give you the fifty p." I said, "It's not about the fifty p." <laughs> so, you know, people want the papers and stuff. <laughs> so, um... Conscientious. <laughs> so, anyway, I went to bed thinking, you know, that's it, I'm, I'm, I've told her I'm still going, so, you know, whatever. Go to sleep, get up in the morning, and, uh, put all my kit on. And I, I used to have layers of clothing on, cos it was really cold, they had, like, a big anorak on, with the fur on. I had, like, waterproof pants, and I got my paper round bag. And, uh, I went downstairs to get out, and tried to open the door, and it was locked. Oh, God, so, uh, so she'd locked it so I couldn't go out, so I'm searching around the house looking for the keys. She must have hid them somewhere. So I thought, oh, God, you know, I've, I've got the papers to do. So I thought, how can I get out? So I went upstairs, climbed out of the bathroom window. God. Right, and to try and jump out of the bed bathroom window onto the porch. But the problem was, I had so much gear on, I was like the Michelin man. <laughs> so I could hardly, I could hardly move as it is. Yeah. And I'm trying to get out the window, and I, I, I'm like, Try to stretch down like that, get me foot on the on the porch. And my bag got caught on like the hook of do you know like how you have a hook so you can put the window open? Right, yeah. Like, the yeah, little yeah, arm goes yeah. on. My bag had got caught on that. I was holding on to the like the, the wall and my foot on the thing so I couldn't sort of pull it pull it away in case I pulled it away and then fell on my head. Yeah. So I'm stuck there. Dangling. Dangling. My dad comes back from working nights. Yeah. He thinks I'm a burglar. Gets out his gun. So, <laughs> so he's shouting and stuff, going mad and going, Dad, it's me. And he had to give us a hand using a. <laughs> he's heard that wily trick in Manchester before. <laughs> <laughs> he had to help me using a washing prop thing, a big stick. What did he do? Well, he said, just uh, hold on for your dear life, and I I'll sort of push the paper bag off the hook. Why and didn't he go upstairs and sort it out? It was at that point where I was in the middle, there was nothing you could do, do you know what I mean? Mm, it's right. at that point where. You've just got to make a decision. Yeah. And by the time he got upstairs, who knows what might have happened. Sure. Do you know yeah. what I mean? You've got to act there and then, don't <laughs> listen around. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, so... And you could hear downstairs, now here he is, the Pink Panther. <laughs> yeah. Dad! Pink Panther. Hurry up! Panther. Ever so pink! <laughs> oh. <laughs> so that, that was close to death, because I must have been about 30 foot in the air. So, he, uh, uh, to cut a long story short, he gave me about four or five near-death experiences, and he went, and the whole point of this, he went, so that's why I think I'm going to die of something horrible, like cancer. And I went, why? He went, right, you ready for this? Yeah. He said, well, I don't check my balls. <laughs> right? <laughs> he said, I don't like the feel. <laughs> <laughs> Carl, Carl, always check your balls. Do you I check don't yours? like the feel. Why don't you like the feel of your own balls? They just, 
I mean, you know that I don't like bodies anyway. Right. Do you know what I mean? It worries me a bit that you've got all that going on in your body, right, and your skin's keeping it all in place. <laughs> right. <laughs> stop, 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 stop. We're going down a whole other avenue of discussion. Let's play a track. Let's come back to it. Alright, this is Carl, the, uh, producer of Ricky Gervais and Stephen Merchant on XFM 104.9. We're playing out some of the best bits, hope you're enjoying it. Here's another one. Oh. His homework was to come up with those stupid lateral thinking problems. Uh, we might- we maybe should give an, a, an example of the, uh, Oh, um, genre. Romeo and Juliet, right, Romeo's asleep on the bed, Juliet's on the floor, covered in water and broken glass. What happened? And you ask all these stupid questions, and it's, Romeo's a cat and Juliet's a goldfish. Again, Awful. what am I thinking? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, come on in, Carl. Right, um... Yeah. There's a bloke lying on the floor, right? He's cut his head, blood's coming out of his head, <laughs> and all his mates come running up, and they're all stood round him. Yeah. And, uh, they don't take their hats off to, as a mark of respect. That why, is outrageous. Why didn't they take their hats off? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm uh, laughing, but it's probably as good as the oh, real absolutely. ones. absolutely. A bloke's fallen with his... Yeah. He's lying on the floor. Yeah. He's dead. Yeah. His mates come running his, up his, like, oh. wasn't it impo- was it important that his head was cut? Um, I don't know. I mean, would it, would it, would it been okay if he'd have been wearing a hat? He wouldn't have been dead if he was wearing a hat. Well, what's your answer? No, you're meant to answer questions. You don't just go, what's your answer? You say, what's well, it turns out you go, no, and I have to guess. It's obviously like sort of motorcycle stunt team or a parachute. Why, why didn't sorry. they take their hats off? Because they're probably still on the motorbikes or something, or... Well, yeah, but if you mark mark a respect to someone, you could take your helmet off. <laughs> <laughs> Getting angry. What? They're parachutists. <laughs> why, can they, why can't they take their helmets off? Because they're still they're coming down from the sky. Still... But he's on the floor, dead. Well, yeah, they... but they can look down and see him on the floor. Are they on the floor, Carl? They're on the floor. as They're well. walking, aren't they? Yeah. Well, they sort of stood there looking at him. They're stood there. Yeah. They're stood on the floor looking. They're at him. soldiers. Why? But why? If because it might be in a battle zone, they might have their zone. helmets on, and they has been right. shot in the head. No. The, well, that does work. <laughs> you see, this is my point. That one works. That one works. Unless you've given us a piece of information where that doesn't work. What? Yeah. What? What's the difference? Why? Why is yours different to he's been shot in the head in the trenches, and they're looking at him and they keep their helmets on? I just don't don't <laughs> think it matters as much if they're in the trench. They're already <laughs> guarded a little bit, so th they could take their hats off. It's the best mate for God's sake. <laughs> He's <laughs> dwelling on this. Are they normal hats? What kind no, of hats are they? The answer. No! Don't get ratty! What right. kind of hats are they? Baseball what hats? If I told you what sort of hats they are, you'd have the answer. Wow! Okay, I've got to guess what sort of a hat it is then, have I? Right. Uh, um, is it a trilby? No. Is it a bowler? I know what it is. What? They're spacemen. No. Oh, that's a good that one. That one works as well. That's, yeah. This is my point. I like that one a lot. It works. He's fallen on the moon, and there are oh, not that the moon happened, it was... Set yeah, up, wasn't it, in the studio, we know that, yeah. yeah. Um, okay, Carl, what's your answer? Builders on a building site. <laughs> Why is that different to soldiers? <laughs> because bricks don't fall in wars. <laughs> <laughs> but bullets fly! <laughs> right. Let's play a record and we'll come back to it, Carl, oh. while you think about what you've done. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> you've embarrassed Let's yourself. play some classic suede. Yeah, and this is for David and Kieran, I think, who wanted a yeah. bit of, bit of butler. FM 104.9, I'm Richard Bayes, with me Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington, Steve. <laughs> well, we were talking about the news just now, and, uh, there was a story I heard in the week, I think, it was on the radio, and I don't know all the details, but what I heard was that a number of, I think it was Falkland, uh, maybe Gulf War, war veterans, were, I think, suing or complaining to the government because they wanted compensation for post-traumatic stress disorder. Now, I don't know all the ins and outs of it, but it seems to me that if you're in the army and you're a soldier, a certain degree of trauma is kind of inevitable. I mean, after all, if you're any good at your job, you are going to see people getting killed. So I don't understand what the ins and outs of it are. I don't <laughs> know why. No, he's already came back and Tony Blair met him and go, all right, well, not really, no. Go on, what's the matter? Well, if she, there was people shooting at us and everything, it was all muddy. Well, calm down, don't cry. Well, I will cry. 
<laughs> there was a drill sergeant just came shouting, saying, look at you, stupid boy, where's this well, gun's not clean? Well, I just cleaned the gun and it was fine, and now he's telling me to clean it again. Yeah, the boots, uh, they were, they were oh, shiny. Well, he's got to do that, it's more distant. His neck was as big as his head. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, but you don't know what they, you know. I don't know what the ins and outs of it are, but, um. Uh, is it, what you got to do is make sure you know what you're going into, that's what I do, you got to check the small print. So if I was, you know, going over to, the, like, the, the Falklands or, you know, the Gulf, I'd put my hand up and go, will, uh, will it be horrible? And go, you hit the back, yes? Will it be horrible? <laughs> it, it will be horrible, yeah. yes. It will be horrible. There will be shooting and lots of death and everything. I, I go, right, I'm not gonna go. And they go, <laughs> exactly. okay then. Okay. That should be fine, yeah. Should be fine, yeah. Just like that. It, does anyone else scared about this? Uh, pretty much all of us. Okay then, well, we won't send anyone <laughs> yeah, then. Exactly. My That'd brother, my brother went into the army, right, cos, um, cos he couldn't get a normal job. And my dad said, you know, if you don't get a job by such a date, that's it, son, you're going in the army. <laughs> And, um, oh. so when, when was the Falklands? Was it about eight? Eighty-one, right? And he joined <laughs> back in like eighty-one or something. And uh, he, he, I don't know, he was an older shot or something. Oh yeah. And uh, he wrote back to my mum saying, uh, you know, a bad time to join, bad time in this. So she wrote. <laughs> well, bad to join. That's so sweet, Carl, isn't it? That's like, dear dad. Yeah, well done. Um, <laughs> don't know if you've noticed. Yeah. Uh, I was on the doll, that, that's for sure. Uh, thank you for joining, uh, a month before the Belgrano. Anyway. Uh, go on. My mum called up, spoke to the sergeant, and said, can you leave him out of this one? Can you leave him out of this one? What, he, the Falkland War? He's only just joined and she called him Chuck, which he got done for. Like, she, she's one of them, it's, I think it's a northern thing, like, saying, how are you, Chuck? Yeah. And she called the sergeant Chuck, and he, he, he the sergeant said to my, my brother, uh, your mum, you know, she's called up and asked if you can not go. Which, uh, of course, you know, I mean, it, it, we'll see how it goes. But can what? You tell what her? do you mean? Why did the sergeant even entertain this? Well, that's... Pilkington, come here. Your mum's been giving me a bit of earache. Now listen, tell her I've told you, but can you call her, because she was really, she called me Chuck and everything. Can you call her and say you don't mind? Well, not really. Oh, please, because I've promised her, uh, say you want to go. No, please, say you want to go. Why was he entertaining this phone call? Because he was new to the army, I suppose. Who? No, your, I mean the sergeant. Uh, I don't know, maybe so, they do that. So what happened? Did he didn't go in the end? So he didn't go, no. You can't do it! But you that's ludicrous! Go, I love it that, oh, we went over the top. Pilton, no, I've got a note. Yeah. Is this, is this really your mum? Yeah. Okay, no, this seems to be you in order. They, you, it, cos I notice it says, um, uh, I do not want to go into the army, I don't want to go, go and fight, and it's crossed out and it's good, my mum says don't yeah. go. Yeah. Now you didn't write this yourself. No, no, my mum wrote this. Okay, you definitely Pilkington. wrote this yourself. You're, excuse, you're gonna have to, um, fill envelopes. No, I'm, I'm <laughs> sure if, if he was needed he would have had to go, but I think they made a bit of a special effort. They sort of said, oh. Well, it wasn't conscription anyway. Oh no, I was seeing But were the, the army, other soldiers going around yeah. just going, <laughs> Pilkington! <laughs> no, he ended Did up being a mechanic in there, and he got kicked out for, um, Going for a packet of fags in a tank. <laughs> <laughs> what? Now wait a minute. Wait a minute. Do you mean he nipped down the shops yeah. in a tank? Yeah. I don't okay. believe that, Carl. You've honest made that. Honest to God, that, and he went off with the sergeant's wife. So that didn't help, and he ended up getting kicked out. Sorry, your your brother's a genius. I love this. I love this. First of all. Um, he gets a call from his mum, go and let him up, and he goes, oh god. Then he goes, uh, uh, where is, where's Pilkington? His mum's on the phone. He's, where is he? he um, he's near your house, Sarge. Near my house? Well, why is, no, no reason. Uh, well, when he comes back, when he's finished, tell him his mum called. And can he get me a packet of fags? <laughs> tell him to walk this time. Wow. This is ludicrous. The, the, so the sergeant phoned out that he was sleeping yeah, I, with his wife? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, did, I was Did your young. mum phone up and say, let him off? <laughs> 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 so let him off this time. Him. Can he- t yeah, yeah. That's yeah. fantastic. But he misses it. I mean, I haven't seen him for about eleven years, but ever since he came out he's just kept getting into trouble and that. And the army, you know, people slag it off, but I think- if you're a certain type of person, it's it's good for it you. It didn't straight him either, did it? No. He was going down the shops in a tank, he was shagging someone no, behind but their was, It's yeah. really weird, it's like back then he was like a proper adult and he had a house and he collected crystal with his wife and that. <laughs> and now, he hasn't got any of that. Has he got the wife? No. Has he got the crystal? Don't think he has. And he I, hasn't I, got the house. I seriously haven't seen him for about 11 or 12 years. Oh, so, so I haven't even spoken to him. Uh, Carl's stories always start off nice and funny and then they just leave me empty and slightly yeah. depressed. I don't know whether to hug him or shoot him, put him <laughs> out of his misery. Can we take Carl to the- uh, phone in if you think I should take Carl to the vet and have him put down. Cos it's just too stressful. 
<laughs> this is what I'd like to leave you uh, with, a song for the ladies. Darkness on the Edge of Town from the amazing album of the same name, Springsteen. See you next week. Bye.